Hello and welcome once again to The Old Man Speaks. I'm Joshua. I come to you three times a week and talk to you for five minutes about just about anything. So I was looking through some of my old magazines. Now after 35 to 40 years of collecting guitar magazines, plus 10 of those years plus owning a shop that sold magazines, I had way too many magazines. I put them in boxes and gave most of them away. But I held on to Fretz magazines from the 1980s. Those were particularly good magazines. And I enjoy putting myself in a different period of my life, looking back at the music from those years. So I found two articles. Actually, they're editorials, viewpoints, as they called them in the magazine. And these were from December of 87 and January of 88. And they dealt with a new phenomenon that was happening in music. The first one is written by music critic Joseph Woodward. It's called, Is This Just Yuppie Music? And the other one from January is Separating Music from Hype by Will Ackerman. You may remember Will Ackerman is the founder of Windham Hill Records. I'm going to, in less than five minutes, try to explain what the controversy was and the moral of the story. So it happened that there was a new marketing craze for new age music. And that might sound something like this. There might be wind chimes in the background or space sounds. But basically, it was pretty airheaded stuff. Undeniably, some of the finest guitar music ever recorded came out on Windham Hill Records in the early 1980s. You had Michael Hedges' Aerial Boundaries. The first four or five records from Alex Degrassi were all magical, great composition. You had people like Robbie Basho and David Quayley contributing to the label. Not only that, but you had many other instruments as well. Daryl Anger was on the label, and he was part of David Grisman's quintet. You had people like George Winston. Now, George Winston was a multi-instrumentalist, but what he did on Windham Hill was create a series of improvisations that were neither jazz or folk, but just his own little creations, and he did that for every season of the year. That became quite popular. The roots of Windham Hill Records are that Will Ackerman had a modest hobby. He was a contractor by trade, and he played guitar. He helped build Tacoma Studios, apparently, and then started to record some of his own guitar music by himself. He gave some cassettes to family and friends. They liked it. They wanted more. So he made some more new music, and then the demand started snowballing. He called his cousin great guitarist Alex Degrassi, and it just kept going from there, and before he knew it, he had a full-fledged record label with a nice, great roster of musicians. To quote Will Ackerman, I think the major record labels looked to Windham Hill and figured that if a small company like ours could sell X amount of records, then they, because of size, capital, and leverage, could sell exponentially more. Recent observations indicate that despite all the recent record company hype, this probably isn't happening. And I believe it was these people trying to capitalize on this movement who put in and promoted the idea of new age. Will Ackerman never called his music and the music on his label new age. He further says later on that I fully believe major labels will be leaving the new aid scene like rats leaving a sinking ship when they realize that the profits from all of this hype simply do not live up to their expectations. Well, I think that in part did happen, and I think Will Ackerman was correct. Well, there's obviously just so much you can say in five minutes, so I think the moral of this story lies in the title of Will Ackerman's article, Separating Music from Hype. I think back to the hippies of the 1960s, 
They weren't really hippies. They were a group of young artists living in the neighborhood trying to create their own scene. When the attention came and it was commercial attention driven by dollar bills, it kind of put an end to all that. But in the end, we have the music. And that's what really counts. Until next time, have a good week.